everybody, it's Katie from Cater's Acres. Welcome back to my polymer clay studio. I'm so glad you have decided to join us today for the very first question and answer with me. So I am going to try my best to help each of you with some questions that you have thrown my way. If you have a question you would like answered in a future Q&A, just go ahead and leave it in the comments below and we'll build that into the next Q&A. The first question that I'm going to answer is from Mary B and she asks, I would love to hear how PC artists get their inspiration. I want to be able to develop my own techniques and ideas, but I usually end up following a tutorial step by step and I don't seem to have any originality. Mary, that is a great question and I know that it is a very hard question for many people and artists especially to be able to identify and to be able to help someone through the process. The first thing is first, you have to already know what you love. Okay, and I'll use, I'll use myself as an example. I love sculpting. I love making faces, making critters, making creatures, making dragons, anything that has to do with sculpting, I love. What I find tedious and not fun for me is bead making. A lot of people love bead making and there's nothing wrong with that, but I know that in order for something to resonate with me, it has to be part sculpture. So in getting your inspiration, you already have to know what you love and what you want to excel at. There are lots of places, and I will link below a video that I did earlier of how to get and to stay inspired. But outside of there, there's a whole bunch of places that you can get inspiration from. Uh, inspiration comes in all forms and all thoughts. When it comes to following tutorials step by step, uh, you need to know again what you love so that you can branch off from that. Um, so if you're following a tutorial uh, about a dragon, maybe one that I've made, and I've made horns or maybe I've made antlers on mine, if you don't like your dragon with horns and antlers, then don't put them on. Maybe choose to do something else. Maybe fins at the side of his face, more like an underwater dragon may have. But try to do your own variations. Use your imagination. What does that thing look like? to you. It may not look the same in your mind. Following a tutorial step by step is a great way to start as a beginner, but eventually you have to find and solidify your own voice and that begins with finding out what you love. We'll go on and explore this question in a future video, Mary, but I hope that for now this helps you. The next question was submitted by Lennis. Lennis is a member of Parker's Tribe on Facebook. Lennis asks, what do you think are the main stumbling blocks for beginners to master in order to take their skills to the professional level? Is it certain techniques? Okay, Lennis, this is a great question and it actually piggybacks off of the one that I just answered for Mary. What are the main stumbling blocks for beginners to master? Number one, you have to know what you like. You have to know what you love. You have to know what you don't like. You have to know what you find tedious and even what you excel at. And becoming a professional artist from a uh, either part, part, part time to part time or full time is a matter of exploration. Generally, now there are exceptions to the rules as in every case, but generally someone who is brand new at a medium will not become a professional at it overnight. It takes years of dedicated practice and work and thought to become a professional. Um, the old adage, even in polymer clay, is true. Practice makes perfect. In part, that's why I developed the Polymer Clay Challenge, and I'll put links below that you can join uh, for this year. The Polymer Clay Challenge uh, was created to help artists uh, or even crafters excel in polymer clay by dedicating an entire year to one specific theme or project of their choice. Um, so the stumbling blocks for a beginner are knowing what you love. In order to branch out of that, you have to have tried everything, really. Uh, you have to have tried all the techniques. You have to try the different forms from sculpting to uh, bead making um, to realism 
uh, in terms of sculpting. Uh, all different kinds of facets, uh, faux techniques, um, foiling techniques, uh, the list goes on and on, even stamping techniques with polymer. You need to try it all so that you figure out what you love and what you don't love. Um, is it certain techniques, uh, is what Lennis asked, that will take you to that professional level? No, it's not. It's developing your love for polymer in a way that lets your voice and your creative inspiration shine through your piece. That's how you become a professional and that's how you get good at it, is through practice and dedication. Our next question um, comes from Heather Andrea Martin and she asks, I would love to know if resin can be used with polymer clay and if so, how? That is a fantastic question, Heather. And the short answer is absolutely resin can be used with polymer clay. Resin is a fantastic medium. Um, it works wonderfully and marries well with polymer. Um, but there's two different kinds of main types of resin. There's a two-part resin mix, which is often what you will see in craft stores, whether it's clear cast or I think it's easy cast, or even ice uh, resin is two parts in a syringe generally. Um, so there's two-part resins, which contains the resin and the hardener that you mix together and cures over time. Uh, there's also another one called Magic Gloss by Lisa Pavelka, and that is a UV curing resin. So it doesn't matter how long it sits out, it will never cure until it's either put in direct sunlight or the UV lamps like the ones that you use at the nail salon to uh, have your gel manicures um, hardened. It's the same kind of technology. Which one you use depends on what you are doing. Um, people who make polymer cabochons uh, often will choose to coat their um, cabs in resin, either in magic gloss or in a two-part resin. Uh, but yes, resin mixes very well with polymer clay. You do need to bake your polymer clay item first, and then you can use your resin either as a sealant or in thick uh, coats, depending on your uh, application. Okay, the next question uh, comes from Samantha, and Samantha asks Katie, if there was one tool that you could not be without in your studio, what would it be? Okay, the one tool that I cannot be without in my studio happens to be my pasta machine. Um, there is no way I could get done what I get done without my pasta machine. I could do without a lot of things in my studio, but a pasta machine is definitely not one of them. Uh, I just got a new pasta machine. I'll put its picture here for you. I do not recommend this pasta machine. Um, I will be retiring it shortly and upgrading my pasta machine. I loved my original Atlas, but this Atlas just doesn't cut it. Um, the clay ripples at lower settings, lower meaning thinner um, settings very, very badly. Um, it also feeds crooked, which tells me that the rollers are not aligned. Um, so $110 for a pasta machine that fails, in my opinion, is a lot of money. Um, so I can't give you advice right now on which one to purchase. My original Atlas was fantastic, um, and I loved it. Um, unfortunately, with years of playing, it got a little worn out. My pasta machine is absolutely the one tool that I cannot live without. Okay, the next question comes from Barb, and she says, Katie, I know it's ill-advised to eat while using polymer clay, but be honest and tell me what you do. <laughs> oh, Barb, that's a great question. Um, you know, polymer clay for years has been said, oh, it's toxic, it's toxic. Now, I'm not going to say you can go out and eat a block of clay because... No, don't eat a block of clay. Um, it doesn't mean that having clay on your hands and then touching a piece of candy and putting it in your mouth, it's not going to kill you and it's not going to hurt you. As a general rule of thumb, I do not eat in my studio. Um, it's kind of a no-no. However, the reason I do not eat is not because of safety precautions or toxicity or anything else. It is because I don't want all the crumbs to get all over my clay. So... That is why I choose not to eat in my studio. Now, I will say that I do have a pack of gum that I keep right here uh, in the drawer uh, that I sit directly in front of so that as I get 
tense. Uh, sometimes when I sculpt, I tend to grind my teeth. I'll pop in a little bit of gum so that I don't uh, subconsciously grind my teeth. Uh, but I will be honest enough to tell you, and if you've been part of Cater's Acres or Cater's Acres groups for long enough, you know that the one thing that I cannot live without is, oh, let me show you the pretty side. <laughs> Isn't that great? Uh, is my cup of coffee. Anytime I am down here in the studio, I almost always, 95% of the time, I have a cup of coffee. I do have a warmer, so this one cup of coffee could last me literally uh, eight hours that I'm down here. Generally, I don't have more than one, but I sip at it all day. Um, the other thing that I also always have down here with me is a water bottle, and I just finished mine, so I don't have one to show you. Uh, but I always have something to drink down here. I find that as I clay and clench my teeth and do that whole bit, that um, I do like to keep my mouth um, moist and to uh, keep hydrated, if you will. So while I don't eat in my studio, it is no secret, I do enjoy a great cup of coffee. In fact, let's have some now. <laughs> I'd like to thank each of you for joining me today for this Q&A, and I hope that you will leave all of your questions in the comments down below, and I will answer them in a future Q&A video. So thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you hit that like button if you learned something today, and subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any more of the polymer clay fun. I'll see you in the next video. Bye! and clench my teeth and do that whole bit. Oh, coffee break. Pause here, I have to think. <laughs> mm, itchy, itchy. Coffee. In fact, let's have some now. <laughs>